Thank you, Ariane, and thank you, Pat, uh, for putting on this wonderful event. Uh, I've, we've, been, we've had a very uh, busy year, and we've been hard at work at Blue developing uh, some space technologies and things that I'm really excited to share with you today. And it's been a big year this far, so uh, um, why don't we get right into it. Um, on the, uh, next, I'm going to show a, uh, an animated uh, version of our astronaut experience, and I think this best um, shows you what the suborbital astronaut experience will be on New Shepard. Uh, what, what people like you and I will be able to experience in a few years. And, and what we're trying to do is give, give our customers a, an, an amazing experience, an amazing view uh, from, uh, from our West Texas launch site, that, which is just three hours east of here. Um, and also, uh, those customers can be um, aspiring astronauts or scientists who have experiments and technologies that, uh, that they want to fly into suborbital space. And I'll talk about the accommodations we're going to make for them. So, so without further ado, let's take a look at this video, and, uh, and then I'll talk more after that. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. 
Well, uh, uh, I had to follow, uh, had the pleasure of following Frank and Sandy, two real astronauts with some animated astronauts, and that's the best I could do today. But uh, uh, coming soon, it'll be a, a year or two away, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be interested in, in flying each and every one of you. We're not selling tickets yet, but uh, uh, if you go to blueorigin.com, you can sign up for uh, information, and you'll be the first to find out when we start to sell tickets. So, so let me talk about the astronaut experience and the payload experience for our science customers. Uh, we've designed this uh, capsule with the astronaut in mind, and the first thing that should catch your eye is the, the gigantic windows. These are the largest windows in spaceflight history. Uh, we looked at, we looked at uh, windows as, as the key part of the experience that, that our astronauts, uh, our customers, are going to be looking for. Uh, that view out the window uh, is going to be fantastic, and, and that's something that we're, we're looking forward to sharing with each and every one of you. Uh, the other highlight here is our full envelope crew escape system. Uh, to meet the safety requirements um, uh, for human spaceflight, we, we, we integrated that system in from the very start. Uh, it is a, a system that we tested back in October of 2012 and continued to refine, and that system is ready to integrate uh, when we get, in, get into some of our full up, uh, flight testing. Um, the flight will last about 11 minutes uh, from, from takeoff to landing. Uh, you'll go up to a, over 100 kilometers. You'll experience uh, about four minutes of weightlessness and, and about three minutes of, of high quality micro-G for the science, uh, science uh, passengers. Um, and, uh, and I have control of the, the charts, so I will go to the next one. And the suborbital research capabilities, um, again, you can take care of the, 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 the milli-G kind of accelerations. Uh, the payload system um, interfaces that have been designed and tested with three of our university partners that we've been working with for several years. And then uh, just a few months ago, we announced a sales partnership with NanoRacks, the industry leader uh, in flying payloads to the space station. And, and uh, they and Blue Origin agree that, that suborbital is a great uh, stepping stone and a great way to uh, uh, gather a lot of valuable science and demonstrate your capabilities before you take that next step to the ISS, which, which we know and want to, to fly for a long time. Um, the uh, future capabilities, uh, astronauts flying with payloads, um, uh, the access to those large windows as a, as a part of the science, uh, the uh, optical capabilities that, that we might add, turn around as fast as 24 hours, so flying, uh, flying an experiment on consecutive days is something we want to do in the future. Uh, and then additional possibilities as the market grows, I think with a, with a commercial capability like this, um, the, you know, uh, the opportunities are endless and the kinds of things that we've heard from our customers and what we think we can do with, with this capability. The, uh, the vehicle itself, uh, New Shepard, is uh, uh, designed for suborbital uh, from the start. So it is a, um, it, it, the, the, the booster itself takes off and lands vertically. It's designed with, uh, with that reusability in mind. And this, this chart is just really meant to show you the trajectory. It's, it's a very vertical trajectory. We're going straight up to 100 kilometers. We're coming back down on the booster base first, um, landing about two miles away from the launch pad. Uh, the capsule separates. Um, and, and then the, um, the astronauts or the uh, experiments that are in that capsule uh, uh, get to experience their mission and come back down under a, a classic uh, parachute landing, which, uh, which we think is, is the right way to go in this, in this time frame in the program. Um, on the next chart, I'll talk a little bit about how we engineered this system um, from the start to be, to be reusable. And, and this is um, really something that we needed to, to, to bring into the beginning, and I want to focus on some of these features. At the top of the vehicle, we have what we call a ring fin, and that ring fin uh, is a, uh, a, stabil a stabilizing device that al enables the, the vehicle to fly back uh, base first, engine first, um, after it's done its, its, its boost mission. So designing that rocket to both go up and down is, is, is the challenge, and uh, we think the ring fin uh, provides the, the right kind of uh, um, control an uh, aerodynamic device that, that will uh, allow us to fly in both of those configurations. The ring fin, of course, is the interface to the crew capsule on the way up, so it is, it's shielded by that crew capsule. Uh, uh, installed in the ring fin are, are wedge fins that provide additional stability for descent and drag brakes which deploy uh, during, uh, during atmospheric reentry, and those are designed to lower our terminal velocity by, by about half. So um, those, those two devices really help us during the reentry portion the aft fins, which are uh, uh, mounted in the uh, four, four around the, uh, the perimeter of the vehicle. Um, why don't I just point to those? Those are, yeah. Those are, th those, those are designed to control the steer the vehicle back to, to the pad. Uh, and then the, uh, the BE3 engine and the landing gear are, are designed for that terminal, terminal landing and touchdown. Um, this is, you know, 
This is a design that we've worked on for a number of years. We looked at uh, many different concepts. Uh, you can see those on our website, uh, the ones that we've worked on over the years. Uh, the, the, the patience that, that we've had in sort of developing and demonstrating these different technologies is about to pay off with, with the capability that we're rolling out with New Shepard. Uh, but, but the real point, uh, the real key is, is um, the deep throttling in the BE3 engine. And the BE3 is, is architected from the start to be a uh, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen engine that can throttle from 110,000 pounds at max thrust down to 20,000 pounds at, at the low end thrust. That allows this, this engine to both meet the boost phase requirements but also land that near empty stage uh, uh, with the single, a single uh, um, uh, component. So. So on slide seven, uh, our first flight was in April of, uh, of this year, and uh, we were uh, demonstrated uh, a good portion of the New Shepard mission. We demonstrated flight of the booster and the capsule up to 377,000 feet, uh, just under 100 kilometers. Uh, that, uh, that mission was designed that way. It's, it's, uh, we, weren't, we didn't design that mission to go to 100 kilometers. We designed it to go a little lower. Uh, the BE3 performance was flawless during the boost phase. It, uh, it worked perfectly, delivered. Uh, cutoff was, was perfect, uh, separation of the crew capsule and the stage uh, worked very well. And uh, if you've seen the video on our website, um, you, you've seen, I mean, you can see the picture in the upper left that um, it, was, uh, it was perfect and we'll show that video a little bit later. Um, capsule deployment, the, the parachute deployment, capsule descent and landing, uh, it, was, uh, it was very smooth and if you were an astronaut on board this vehicle on April 29th, you would have had a great ride. Um, we did make an attempt to recover the booster, and, and we weren't able to, uh, to do that. Um, that is uh, because we lost hydraulic pressure, uh, but that is something that, that we're going to continue to work on. It's something that nobody's done before, and we recognize the, the challenge of launching a stage to space and then recovering it is, is something that, that mankind hasn't done yet, and we, uh, we look forward to, to contributing to that and lowering the cost of spaceflight. Next steps, orbital. Uh, Suborbital has never been the end goal for, for Blue Origin. It's always been to um, put people into low Earth orbit and take them beyond low Earth orbit. And um, we, we want to, as a, as a company goal, we want to put you know, millions of people um, into a position where they're living and working in space someday. And we have a very long-term vision to get there. So suborbital is that first step. Um, orbital is that next step. And um, uh, we announced last month that we're um, opening up a third site uh, separate from our, our Washington and our West Texas sites will be opening up a orbital launch vehicle manufacturing and operations center in Cape Canaveral uh, in Florida. And uh, the launch pad will be at LC-36, which was a historic pad that uh, the Atlas II used to fly out of. Uh, and, um, and then we'll be building the manufacturing site out at Exploration Park, which is just outside the Kennedy Space Center gate. Um, the, the orbital, the vehicle that will launch from that pad is our our orbital launch vehicle, there's an there's a artist conception on the right. The, uh, this vehicle will be powered by our BE-4 engine and our BE-3 engines. The BE-3, of course, uh, powered our new Shepard stage in April and will fly again before the end of the year. Um, the, uh, these engines are, are systems that we've designed uh, and built in-house. They're fully funded by, by Blue and, and uh, something that um, we are making available to all launch providers. So, of course, we're um, uh, we have an agreement with the United Launch Alliance to provide BE-4 engines for the Vulcan launch vehicle, which will fly later this decade as well. Uh, our BE-3U engine is the upper stage variant of the BE-3 that flew on New Shepard, and that is a 150,000-pound uh, pound LOX hydrogen engine with a larger expansion ratio nozzle for upper stage, designed for upper stage. It's designed to have low recurring cost, and, and uh, it's, um, you know, and of course it's been demonstrated in flight recently, uh, the uh, key, key components of that engine. Uh, the BE-4, of course, will fly on the Vulcan. It will fly on Blue's orbital launch vehicle. It's a 550,000-pound thrust uh, LOX liquefied natural gas engine. Um, and uh, and we're, we're in the process of designing and developing that. We've made a lot of progress on the test stand and uh, um, are, are getting prepared to start assembling that first, uh, first development engine for testing next year. Uh, recently, we announced we uh, um, surpassed uh, 100 stage combustion tests. Um, uh, on the main combustor and the pre-burner combustor for that engine. That's a big step for us uh, and uh, uh, provided us with uh, quite a bit of data to support the design, which is, which is getting into the CDR phase. So, and next up, growth. We are currently at Blue Origin. We are uh, um, about 500 people now uh, located in our Kent, Washington and our West Texas sites. 
Um, and uh, we've got a lot of exciting projects, and that means we need to grow our team. Um, the, uh, the growth will be in Florida uh, with more than 300 jobs open, but also in our Washington and our Texas sites. We'll be growing in all areas. We're looking for uh, the best and brightest people who are passionate about space. Um, and uh, we've got a great team. And, and, uh, um, and like with the, the long-term kind of uh, approach we take to our technology, we also take that long-term approach to hiring. So we're balancing, you know, recent graduates, uh, newer recent graduates with more experienced veterans. And so we have a team that's, that's uh, um, come in and, and get to work in a culture that, uh, that I think they, they, they really enjoy. Um, we've been really working diligently to, uh, to develop the capabilities that I've shared with you today. Um, I think the, um, the flight we have coming up before the end of the, uh, the, end of the year with our new Shepard is a testament to the, that, that diligence and the, and the passion of our team. Um, and we're really excited to, to share, share those capabilities with you. Uh, if you want more information, our website is at, uh, is at blueorigin.com. And uh, with that, I uh, thank you, and I'm ready to take any questions. So.